Praise the Lord. This is Dr. Orlando Short from the National School of Theology. And I want to, again, thank those of you that have taken this course, understanding the prophetic, uh, that you're understanding that this is a needed course for you to go forth and on a high level in ministry. I uh, believe that, again, that this course, again, um, I would put it above many. I really, really would. This is, course is a necessity. And again, if you're enjoying this course, again, just let me know. Give me a shout out. Give me a text. If you're enjoying this video, this media, just let me know. Just say, just say, Dr. Shore, I enjoy the teaching. Just let me know. And give me a word of encouragement. I need it as well. I walk in the prophetic, but hey, every prophetic person needs encouragement. We never outgrow encouragement. Now, what I want to start off today, um, this is our second video on this Easter Sunday morning. So this is our second one that we're doing for this course. And I want to talk with you a little bit about time. Uh, one thing about time, uh, but word time is important because we just left off the last video talking about power and protocol. Well, when it comes down to power, power equals work uh, uh, plus time or times time. What you mean by that is that you to increase your power, you need uh, you either increase your time or you increase your work. If you want to decrease time, you want to increase work. In other words, so in order for us to, to get power, to become more, more powerful in God, you must increase the time that you spend with him. The more time you spend with God, the more you know God, the more you know, the more powerful you become. But uh, to get more without increasing time is putting more work in. The more work you do, a, to spend around God's house or spend around God's people, the more work you do, okay, decreases the time that you receive that high level of anointing. So for some, some people, um, it takes them years to get to that high level of anointing. But for those, they are really consecrating themselves. They're going to Sunday school. They're going to Bible study. This is why going to Bible study and Sunday school is important because you're putting the work in. The more work you put in, it diminishes the time that God allows the anointing to come into your life. But if you're just going to Sunday morning service and, and you're in, so it's going to take more time for you to build up what you need then that person that goes to sunday school bible study friday service sunday afternoon travels with the pastor travel whoever is evangelizing so again um putting work in is important so i just want to encourage you uh get busy for the lord it's important to stay busy for god especially if you are looking to rise to a higher level of the prophetic time is important. Let's talk about the different types of time. Now, there is the wrong time, there's the right time, there's a set time, there's due time, there's out of time, there's ahead of time, there's behind time, uh, there's the right on time, and uh, uh, and then there's also seasons. We also talk about seasons. I'm gonna talk about a few of those things. And being a prophet, you must understand when is the right time. Because there, are, even though God may give you something, what is the right time for that what he gave you to uh to come forth so just because you are hearing from god that does not mean that god meant for you to release that what you hear they're releasing again takes direction from god uh it you need to hear what what he's given you and you need to hear also the release time so again so make sure you understand that things must be done at a right time. That was a wrong time. Again, so anything, if it's not right, it's wrong. It's just the opposite. If it's just not right, it's wrong. There's no in the middle. If you're not right, you're just plain wrong. You wasn't almost, this is not horseshoes. You cannot be prophesying, well, I almost got it right. No, if, if, you're, if, you, if it wasn't right, it's just plain wrong. So in, in the prophetic, that we are not playing horseshoes. You're either right or, or you're wrong. There's a set time. There's a time that God has for many things to, to be performed, to come to pass. And we need, again, that means waiting on on God. Due time again. Due time is when you not necessarily uh, know the exact time, but you understand by faith that it will take place when it's when it needs to take place. This is due time. Out of due time again. When something is out of due time, this is only a, a play of words. 
it's only a, a, a play of words. This is mostly many times used when a person is, is really impatient um, and they're trying to force something to happen that God has has due time on. They, when we're not really willing to be patient and allow this thing to take place in due time, and when you don't, when God has not given you specific time. So out of due time is you trying to rush something before before the time. Now ahead of time again, that is pretty much what we're talking about. Out of due time and ahead of time is practically the same thing here. Um, ahead of time is trying to uh, force something, uh, force the hand of God. Make sure as a prophet, you're not trying to force the hand of, uh, of God in somebody's life. Yes, God said he's going to bless him, but he didn't say today. Many times you, as a prophet, you, can, you have to make sure that you don't add or take away from God's word. God said he's going to bless certain people. You cannot say, I see God blessing you Monday. You cannot say, I see God blessing you Friday. God said that he was going to bless them. You added the part that he was going to do it Monday. You added the part he was uh, going to do it Friday. Even when you're to hear the recipient of a prophecy, make sure that if that person is prophesying to you, make sure that they're he what they're saying is exactly what they're hearing. Because many times people like to add to God. They get excited and they get emotional. This is why prophets should never be emotional. They need to make sure that they are, uh, are speaking only what they hear, only what God is sharing with them. And so, um, and right on time is nothing more than, as we said a while ago, right on time is nothing more than the, the fact that God's fulfilling um, what you need just when you need it most. And understanding seasons. Seasons is not just a particular time. It, it's a it's a period in which God um, allows various things to happen. We understand that there are seasons when it comes down to uh, the, the, the weather and all that. We have a winter, spring, a summer, and a fall. And likewise, there are various seasons uh, in uh, in our in our Christian walk, um, let me read uh, Colossians four, uh, the fourth chapter, and the fifth verse. Walk in wisdom uh, towards them that are without, redeeming the time. This is dealing with uh, dealing with season. Uh, season. Um, now I'm gonna read just a little bit more here. Um, uh, I'm reading Acts, Acts, the third chapter. Man it said, "Man that sat in the gate called beautiful." Peter and John came to the gate. This man asked if they had had any money. Um, they said silver and uh, they said silver and gold have we none. But but then we know the rest of the story that they went on and you know such as I have we give unto thee. Uh, and so, but what we get out of this is understanding season. This was this man's season to be blessed. I'm quite sure that this was not the first time this man was prayed for. But so therefore, uh, we we cannot conclude that this was the first time that somebody anointed prayed for him. I, I, I'm not going to be uh, supercilious into believing that uh, this was the first time anybody of faith had prayed for him. But there are certain miracles that will not take uh, place until a specific time. This is due season. And so there are certain seasons of healing. There are certain seasons for multiple things that take place in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has various seasons for it. And, and a prophet is the one that announces the seasons. A prophet is the one that announces seasons. So uh, again, this is why we need seasons, uh, prophets in the church. Now, if you have a church and don't have a prophet and that prophet is never announcing the season, that prophet, again, uh, is not doing what their God has called them to do. A prophet must be able to announce the seasons. Uh, and so let's move on. Another word that we want to share with you is gates. Uh, gates are places of business, spiritual business. There are all kinds of gates uh, in, in life today. In natural life, windows is a gate. Doors are gates. There are literal gates to, in the body. There's the eye gate, the ear gate, the nose gate, the mouth gate. There's the hand gate. Uh, so there are all types of technology. There are gates. There's a television set, uh, telephone, radios, computers. All these are gates. These gates uh, give access. And so uh, even when we talk about gates, we want to make sure um, that when we're uh, as a prophet, that we understand what gate God is, is, is coming through, how the Holy Spirit is moving, what gate. Sometimes God has used the gate of the television. Sometimes there are m millions of people that can tell you that 
that God healed them through a television program. God had healed many off of off the television. These are gates, uh, 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 telephone. And so I was called into the ministry over the telephone. A uh, computer can be a gate. So therefore, as a prophet, everything that you touch, everything that's, uh, that's involved around you, you must keep sanctified. Your computer should not have porn. Hello, your telephone should not have um, nude pictures and various things of this nature. Your television should, uh, again, not be playing all kind of crazy mess because these are gates that God can use. Many times we look at these natural things and we think that it's okay to do whatever we want to do on them, but I'm hearing these things are gates that God can use. And if you don't allow God to use them, the devil will. Amen. So you got to understand that even your body is gate, your eyes are gate. So therefore, your eye being a gate, you don't want to be looking at everything. You don't want to be, as a man, you don't want to be looking at every tight skirt that walks past you. You need to close that eye gate. You, your heart, don't allow your heart to be so easily overwhelmed, which is a gate. Don't allow your ear gate to hear everything. This is why I myself, personally, Dr. Short, I don't believe in foolish jesting and joking. I don't believe in uh, a whole lot of comedy because the fact that this, the Bible talks about foolish gesturing, and foolish gesturing is exactly what it is, foolish. And who deals in foolish? Fools. So you cannot separate a fool from the word foolishness. And so therefore, uh, don't ask me, uh, who can I come to a comedy show? This is this is me. This is just Dr. Short. I am not in the comedy because I believe that comedy is foolish. And I know that the Bible said that laughter works like a medicine. There's a difference between laughter laughing and and uh telling jokes telling foolishness and half the foolishness that you hear people telling jokes are talking about the church yet you're going to talk about the church but yet you want the people to come to the church that you're talking about that you got them laughing about that i believe that, that that's a problem that's that's uh uh i'm trying to think of the word but that's a little crazy to me but let me move on that that's not that's not what i'm trying to teach on right now but even though it needs to be taught okay so we want to talk about these various gates and these gates again are are deep you know and then there's other the gates. There are gates in the earth, uh, volcanoes, oceans, the sky. All of these are various, various gates. And, and that we need to understand. We must understand the gates of time. There are moments are gates in revelation in minutes. Uh, seconds are, are gates uh, in minutes. Minutes are gates in hours. Hours are gates uh, on our watches. Watches are gates it, uh, to days. Days are weeks and weeks are months and months to years, years to decade, and so forth. You understand that. So therefore, the Bible said we must redeem the time. We read that scripture a while ago. Understanding that every second is crucial. The one second that you give to God, you can actually, uh, that one second that you give to God could be a second that somebody could be, could be healed and delivered. So every moment that we spend with God is crucial. Crucial. Every moment that you allow the devil to use you is important as well. As a prophet, you don't have no time to give to him. As Nehemiah was on the wall, he couldn't come. He didn't have time to come down. You must un understand that you don't have time for foolishness. You don't have time. I don't have two hours to give to foolishness. I don't have two hours to give to a whole lot of craziness. Most of the people that's been around me for the most of my life will tell you they rarely, rarely ever heard me doing a whole lot of cutting up plan and being foolish. This is not what true apostles do. True apostles, the Bible says, be sober-minded. It's hard to claim being sober-minded when you're always joking and gesturing. I mean, you can come back with me, saints of God. Email me, text me, call me. Show me how you can be sober-minded and joking and gesturing at the same time. I, I, I just don't get it. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a trend in the earth, and I want to, I want to tear that wall down. That trend is not of God. We need to be teaching people God's word. They don't want to hear God's word. And, and what's happening now is that people are trying to um, bring uh, the youth in and say, "Well, we need to do more things for you." And man, I'm not gonna try to get the youth in to heaven by taking them through hell. Amen. The same religion, the same gospel, the same word that saved my grandmother, saved my mother, that saved me, 
that saved my kids is still working today. We don't have to change us. Why do we have the attitude as prophets and pastors that we need to change the gospel in order to get people in? We don't have to take them that we're not we're not gonna tell them it's okay uh to, to have a little marijuana, to have a little wine. No, I believe a little leaven leave it the whole lump at what the word of God says. I'm not saying uh, again um Again, that we cannot enjoy ourselves because I enjoy myself and I every time I go to church every time I indulge myself in God's work. But let's move on a little bit more. Understanding we talked about the co cosmological order of the kingdom. And so we're going to get ready to stop right here. If you have any questions and comments, please let me know. These are just uh, uh, audio and videotapes that we have. If someone just needs the audio version, I believe that we can separate the audio version from um, of the video version, and this is part of what um, uh, to what we are hoping to be able to utilize to bring. I just want to bring one other little teaching into this video. The, again, the, for those that may miss the first audio, the purpose of prophecy is to edify, exhort, comfort. This is in First Corinthians fourteen and three: convict and convince and convert. Convict, convince and convert number five this is all in first Corinthians 4 3 that all may learn this is a prophet a prophet is a person that uh foretell or foretell f-o-r-e foretell this is a person that is is predicting they're they're speaking things that would may come to pass the f-o-r-t-h is a foretelling is a person that edifies comfort and ex exhorts for the purpose of convicting and convincing Amen. So I hope you have that because this will definitely be on your test. Amen. If you are watching this and you're not a part of the National School of Theology, what you waiting for? Go to the nationalschooloftheology.com. Uh, go ahead and pay the registration. Get, out, get in on this course. Amen. It's not too late. Get in on this. We have other courses coming up. Understand the anointings coming right behind this one. Please check us out again on YouTube and on Facebook. Love you much. This is Dr. Short again from the National School of Theology. Be blessed.